Friday, April 14. Dwell more on the idea of Wednesday's study about our need to be part of something bigger than ourselves and our meagre, short-lived, often corrupt, damaged and disappointing lives. Who doesn't have some of those things in their existence? This desire makes so much sense too. Physically, what are we but small buckets of flesh carrying around our own brains, a couple of pounds of carbon-based organic material closer in composition to a bucket of fried chicken than to a hard drive? What can these small self-contained packets of meat mean in contrast to the infinity that surrounds them? To live only for yourself is to live for something no bigger than yourself, when there's so much all around us and beyond us is like being locked for life in solitary confinement amid a large city that you can feel vibrating through the walls. And what larger, grander and more glorious and consequential thing could we live for than proclaiming the message of eternal life that we have been given in Jesus? Ellen White writes in The Great Controversy, page 612, Servants of God, with their faces lighted up and shining with holy consecration, will hasten from place to place to proclaim the message from heaven. By thousands of voices all over the earth, the warning will be given. Miracles will be wrought, the sick will be healed, and signs and wonders will follow the believers. Satan also works with lying wonders, even bringing down fire from heaven in the sight of men, as it says in Revelation 13.13. 13. Thus, the inhabitants of the earth will be brought to take their stand. End of quote. And that brings us to our three discussion questions for this week. 1. Several have written to me inquiring if the message of justification by faith is the third angel's message. And I have answered, it is the third angel's message in verity, Ellen White wrote in the Advent Review and Sabbath Herald on April 1, 1890. What relationship does justification by faith have to the three angels' messages? 2. Dwell more on the phrase everlasting gospel. What is everlasting about the gospel? And 3. What does it mean that Seventh-day Adventists are in so many countries of the world? What does it say about how God, so far, has blessed our efforts? At the same time, how can your local church, even your local Sabbath school, play a larger role in finishing the work? And now it's time for Inside Story with Sibylla. Thank you, Sibylla. Pink Hair and Gone by Andrew McChesney Days before the start of the school year, a mother called the principal of a Seventh-day Adventist elementary school for help in Ukraine. I don't understand anything about religion and I don't know anything about religious denominations, the mother said. I just saw the sign outside your school reading Christian School and I'm absolutely certain that this is what I have been looking for. The principal was intrigued by the call and asked for more information. She learned that the caller was the mother of a little girl named Natasha. The mother said that when she had been pregnant with Natasha, she had often thought about sending her child to a church school one day. The persistent idea puzzled her because she was an atheist. When Natasha reached school age, the mother enrolled her in a private school that promised to nurture creativity in an atmosphere of complete freedom and no discipline. Natasha's mother became alarmed when the girl announced in the second grade that she wanted to dye her hair pink. That summer, she worried that the lack of discipline might hurt her daughter's future. And then she saw the sign for the Adventist school, remembered her thoughts when she was pregnant and thought, I want my child to go to this school. On the first day of school, Natasha started third grade in a class with five other children, all from Adventist families. She struggled at first to catch up with the other children, but she quickly gained ground. Reading the Bible and participating in morning devotions were new experiences for her. Wide-eyed, she eagerly absorbed everything she learned about God. Several weeks into the school year, her mother called the principal to say she was delighted with the changes that had come over her daughter. 
She loves your Bible lessons and she has fallen in love with the school, she said. She tells us everything that goes on there and has us to praying before meals. I am so happy I brought her to your school. Not long ago, the mother contacted the principal to ask for information about Adventist beliefs. Natasha wants to become an Adventist and I would like to know what changes need to be made in our lives, she said. I also want to become an Adventist. The family story has not ended. Their path with God is just beginning, said Ivan Rapalov, Education Director of the Euro-Asian Division, whose territory includes Ukraine. Thank you for your mission offerings that support Adventist education around the world. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.